Hi, in this video I'm going to cover how to log in with Microsoft 365 without using a normal authentication system within your application. So the case of where you might want to do this is where you want to build an application that solely uses Microsoft 365, in which case you don't necessarily need a, a normal user system, in which case you're just happy to log in with 365 rather than people have to have a register on your site, they just need to have an existing 365 account. So I'm just going to go through this process. So I've got this package called Laravel Microsoft Graph. Uh, so I'm going to grab this and install it. So I've got a fresh version of Laravel. I'm working on version 9. So I'm going to install the package. That just installs everything available that we need. And then I'm going to grab the config file and publish that. And within the config file is where it defines or like the client ID, the, the secrets, the redirect paths, things like that. Uh, also, towards the bottom, we've got this scope section, and this is going to specify what the API, what our integration can access. So for us, the defaults will be more than enough. So we can, we can leave on those. Uh, and then we're going to publish the migrations as well. So within the migrations, if I just open that, that file up, There's some I prepared earlier, so I'll just delete those because I don't need multiples of the same ones. Okay, so we've got a Microsoft 365 um, tokens table, and in this table, it's going to have the user ID, which normally you would attach to the existing user, but when you're using a login system, it kind of just ignores that column. Instead, it's the email field that's more important, and then you've got the access token, refresh token, so when it's going to expire. So now I'll close that one down for now. Okay, so we're also going to need a listener. So when we actually log in, a list, an event is going to fire from the package and this listener listens out for that event and what it actually looks for. So if the user ID doesn't exist, then it's going to go ahead and create a user and log in as that user. Otherwise, it's going to just log in as the existing user should you already have one within the system. So I'm just going to publish that listener. Next, so lastly, we just need to migrate the database to create all the tables. So that's now, now running through and created those, those tables. So we need a bunch of environment variables and we need to register our application in order to put this process through. Um, so this, this, the rest of this page just kind of goes through the different options that we can go through. But if we just move on to log in with graph. Uh, so one thing it does mention actually is Within the register application, this just basically tells you where to go to to get the Azure details. So I've already logged into Azure and I just need to create a new account in order to do this integration. So what I want to do is go to the Active Directory uh, and then I want to go to App Registrations. So I've already logged into my 365 account and I just need to create a new registration. So call it whatever you want. So I'm just going to call it Demo. So you've got three different levels, well, you've got four different levels really of account types. If you're just doing it for yourself uh, and you know, your own tenant, your own kind of, if you're your own kind of organization, everyone's going to have the same domain that they're going to log in from, then a single tenancy one is fine to use. Or if you want multi-tenancy, you can select this one, uh, and then you've got a few other options. For, for this case, I'm just going to use a single tenancy. So next we want to select the web as the, the platform and we need to give it the path of where we want to want to go to so if i'll just come back to the login and register process and i'll just copy over these details so these go inside the env file so i'm just going to put these towards the bottom so we, we need the client id and secret and tenant which i'll get those once we've actually created the account uh, the actual registration and we're going to need to know what the details are um, so in my case, this is the URL I'm using. My, my local, I'm using Valet for my local in, install, and I'm using Microsoft 365 demo dot local host as my domain. So I'm just gonna, rather than use project.com, I'm just going to replace those with the application, and I'm going to use Connect as the endpoint to actually connect to the integration. So now we know that I'm definitely using that. I can go back to this application put this in as the endpoint that I want to connect to, hit register, and that'll go and create the account. So now we've got this application client ID. So if I copy that, come back to the environment and put that in place. Um, also, we want the tenant ID. So I'll copy that over. 
And to get the secret, we actually need to go to certificates and secrets and, and create, create new client. So I'm just going to call it demo. And I'm, I'm going to have six months is fine for the expiry. Uh, you can select up to 24 months. So that creates that and it creates us a one time view where we can see the actual token. So I want to copy that because you won't see it again once you've moved away from this page. So we'll put that into the secret. I'm going to delete this app afterwards anyway, so I don't mind you seeing it all. Okay, so that, that puts that in place. Uh, so the next thing I want to really is I want to give it the, the permissions. So you go to API permissions. Uh, by default, it has the user, the user. And actually for this purpose, that is like, that is kind of enough because that's all we really need is to log in as a user. But should you want to add more permissions, you can add permissions, select Microsoft Graph and delegate permissions because we're logged in as a user. And then you can go through and specify all the different permissions that you want. So a typical ones that I'll, I'll select is, is now. So if I come scroll down and look for this, there's, there's a whole bunch of, of different permissions that you want. So you might, if you're doing like um, a sort of um, a contact system, you might want to be able to create contacts. So you want read and write. Also, we're looking for, there's files if you work with files. Uh, mail is quite a popular one as well. Whereas I want to, I want to select mail.send so I can, I've got permission to send email. I want read.write so I can read, read the email as well. But this is only for logged in users. You can't access other people's emails. You'd have to be logged in as a tenant for that as a, like an admin account. That'll do for now. We're not actually going to be using all these permissions for this case. So I just said the defaults will be found uh, for the purpose of this demo. Okay, so if we come back to here, uh, so we've, we've filled in these details, we filled in our URL at this point. Uh, so we've already published a config and our migrations, and we've already set up the listener, so that's already in place. So we'll just run through, through the steps. So I'm just going to copy this the roots file, and if we go into our roots file now, we've got our, our default is our, our homepage, which you get with Laravel, so I'm just going to replace that. So say when you go to the homepage, just redirect to login, and then redirect is going to go to an off controller, which doesn't yet exist, so we need to create that. And that's only if you're a guest. And this is going to go to HTTP controls off. So we need to create a new controller. So I'm going to create that controller. And now inside the app HTTP controls off directory, we've now got an off controller. So that's that. So when we first log in, it's going to go to this list login controller. And what that's going to do, or really what we want it to do, is if you're not actually logged in, we want to redirect it to the connect. And what the connect to do is actually integrate with the 365. So if I come back, back down here, and um, so on this page, it lists through um, the off controller contents. So what I want to do is I'll just grab over the so I open, open up the file, um, I'm going to put in the package facade, because we're going to we'll need to use that. And I'll just copy it over these three methods. So <clears throat> within these three methods, we've got a login. And within the login, it's just going to load up a view for, for the, login, the login page itself. So when they connect, we're just going to call connect via the package and that will just redirect you to the 365 portal where you can log in, authenticate and then come back to this application. Likewise, we'll log out or just do, just log you out and to connect your session. So now we've got that, that, that controller in place. Um, I was going to copy all, all this file. Now this is geared towards using Tailwind, but it doesn't really matter what you're using because this is just kind of a placeholder for you to customize. So what we need to do is create a view in an off folder called login. So if you open resources, views, and I'm going to create a folder called off. And then we're going to create the login blade file. I'm going to put all this in place. The only thing that's really important on, on here is the actual login part. I can't see for login. So 
So we've got this this root here where we're going to log. We're using the root name for connect, and that's just going to connect and tell us to log in to three six five. Okay, so that's that's all we need for that in place. And then once you're actually logged in, you can actually look at the details that you've got inside. So before we go any further, let's go into our application. And so I didn't really test this yet. So let's just refresh this page and we get our login page. And it looks awful at the moment because it's not geared. Basically, this layout file is geared towards using Tailwind CSS. And I've not connected Tailwind into this project because it's, it's outside the scope of this video. But we've got a login button at the bottom, so if we click login, that will take us to 365. And because it's the first time we've logged in, it's going to give it tell us which permissions we're requesting. And at this point, we can accept those permissions, and it will redirect us back to the application. Oh, one thing I did forget to do was cr to create the pages controller. Um, well, not technically required, but part of the part of the sample kind of roots I put in place is when you are logged in, it goes to the home page. And it's expecting a pages controller to a page controller to exit to be there. So I'm just going to make a new controller called pages controller. Um, we want an, a method called app. So if we go to pages controller called app. At this point, we know we're, we're logged in. So what we, one thing we can do is if we just grab this details, this will just spit out. Um, this will just spit out our details. I just need to import the actual facade. There we go. So once we're logged in, we hit this page. What it's going to do is just show us the information that we're logged in with. So now that we've got that in place, if I come back to this, to this page and refresh, now it shows up the, the full details of our user account. So you can see like the account name that we're logged in with, the email address that we're logged in with. Uh, so that's all, all set up and running. So at this point, we're now ready to go. So, okay, so from here, the other thing to, to look at now is if I go back into Storm, open up my database, I'll just refresh it. There we go. <clears throat> so within here, now we've got our token stable, and if I expand that token stable, we can see that the user ID is empty as expected, but it does have the email address, the access token, the refresh token, and the expiry time in seconds of when it's actually going to expire. And we'd say by default, we've got the created that and updated tokens as well. So from this point onwards, we can then log in with 365 and access the, the API as normal. Uh, so one thing I didn't quite explain on the roots is in the way this is protected is we're using the MS Graph Authenticated Middleware. So what this means is, as long as you've got a token, then you can access this, this page. But if you didn't have this middleware, um, this puts in place to make sure it is protected. That way, so if you didn't have a token, you wouldn't be able to access these routes.